Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video I am going to be carrying out a, another component swap on the VFR and in this one it's going to be the cam chain tensioners. Now uh, I've had a few questions about the cam chain, te uh, cam chain tensioners um, uh, in the comments on my, on my previous videos so uh, I thought it might be about time that I, uh, that I actually carried out a change. Now I believe that the ones that are on the bike are original uh, out of the factory and that they've never been swapped. The bike's done 26,000 miles. I don't think that's particularly high for a cam chain tensioner. Um, I don't, I, I can't recall if there is actually a um, specified time or mileage within the manual, I would have to check. However, the front one does sound quite rattly. So I think it's about time that I did this um, component exchange. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Let's get on with it. Right then, uh, in order to get access to the cam chain tensioners on the VFR, we need to remove the seat and uh, lift the tank uh, in order to get to the front one. And to get to the rear one, it's behind this heat shield panel here behind the uh, behind the uh, right hand rear set. So what I need to do, uh, I need to strip off those components, get uh, the tank lifted up, etc., etc., and uh, hopefully we'll get access now. When it comes to the front one, the manual just specify that you need to remove the throttle bodies. It is possible to get to it without moving the throttle body. So that's what I'm going to do. It just, it's a bit fiddlier, but in the long run, easier than having to take the throttle bodies off and put them back on again. So that's the way I'm going to do it. If you want to follow the factory manual and remove the throttle bodies, then by all means, it's, uh, you know, it's your time, your bike. Um, however, I am going to uh, avoid the hassle of having to do that and work with what I've got. Um, as I said, slightly fiddlier, but doable. Okay, so, uh, Without further ado, let's uh, let's get the bike stripped and ready to uh, ready to access the cam chain tensioners. There we go, that's the swipe to get out. Um, this bit here makes it quite difficult to uh, to get it off the bike. Um, as you can see, it's quite rusty. I might give that a little bit of a treatment before I put it back in. Um, worth noting that there is actually a couple of nuts on the back of there, which I didn't realize until I went to try and take these two bolts out. These, I thought these bolts were, uh, these nuts were captive, but they're not. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, when, you're trying to, uh, when you're trying to get it apart. All right, let's stick this to one side along with these bolts here. All right, just leave that to one side. You don't need any of that, uh, any further than that. Um, that'll all be good. Right, just here, that is the rear cam chain tensioner. So as you can see, we've got really good access to that now. One bolt and two bolts, and that's all that holds the cam chain tensioner. On to, the cylinder head. Right then, next step, get these two bolts undone. Right then, before we actually move on with the actual removal and installation of the uh, of the new one, what I want to do is I want to show you um, components that I've got. Now these I actually got um, directly from Japan, as you can see, Japanese uh, customs label, um, and I got them from a seller on eBay who imported them to me directly from Japan. Now, um, the reason why I did that is because the price was insanely cheap. Um, the genuine Honda parts, as you can see, all the, uh, you know, all marked up as genuine Honda parts. Um, however, uh, bearing in mind I'm doing this from memory and I did order them um, end, of, end of April. I've been waiting a little while to do this video. 
Um, I think I paid £58 each. Now what I'll do, I'll put a link to um, the parts on eBay that I got from that seller uh, in the description below. So if you want to do this, you can, uh, you can get them from him. Um, they, they didn't take long to arrive. If I recall, it was less than two weeks, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, I've bought things in the UK before now that have taken that long to arrive. Um, yeah, fi uh, 58 quid, and that was the uh, tensioner with the gasket as well. And um, Fowler's, for example, in the UK, what is somewhere in the region of 90, 96 pounds, I think it was, or it might have even been 98 pounds each. So I paid a little bit more than Fowler's wanted for one to get two. Um, so it was well worth it, well worth the wait. Um, as I said, Fowler's probably would have delivered them within two to three days. Um, this one took two weeks, but the, the cost saving was, you know, made it uh, well worthwhile. So yeah, like I said, I'll leave a link, uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And what we've got here are the two um, tensioners, one and two. That's the, that is the actual part number. Um, so if you do want to uh, get them from somewhere else, that's the part number you require for the tensioner. And these are the little gaskets. And that is the part number. Okay, and that's what they look like. Um, now, what I'm going to do later on, I'm going to come on to something because uh, the uh, the little pinhole that you see there, that's for, for oil to flow through into the campaign tensioner from the cylinder head. Um, I'm going to make a slight modification to these and I'll talk about that later on when I come on to it. Okay then, so let's have a look at the, uh, let's have a look at the tensioner itself then. That is all there is to it. As you can see in the back there it is weird little uh, little piece of steel um, and what that is is a little tool and if you watch me let my finger go out now see it goes out what that does it engages in a slot I'm not sure if that's gonna show on camera or not but down that hole there is a slot that that engages into and I will put it in right now right that is engaged in the slot and if you watch where my finger is you can see it's starting to wind up what you have to do is put a little bit of pressure on uh, otherwise it will it will force itself back out again because it's under spring tension keep going and eventually you'll feel it stop like that and then what you need to do get your little tool and just push it in a little bit further and then you can release your finger off the end like so and that is now locking in position and that is the installation position right then what we're going what we do need to do first though is we're going to need to use that tool so i'll take it out on this one so what i'm going to do is on the uh, on the old cam chain tensioner this bolt here this stopper bolt and the sealing washer need to be removed in order for us to fit this tool and then that stopper bolt will be used on this one once it's installed and i've got some uh, i've got some fresh washers uh, i've got some copper ones which i'm going to put on um instead of the genuine honda ones which are four quid each believe it or not a copper six mil copper washer is perfectly adequate and the cost pens so what i'm going to do remove that bolt um you will need to put a little bit of a rag down like so because oil will drip out of it um hence the reason why there's a ceiling bolt on there uh, a ceiling washer on there so yeah, what I'll do, I'll um, whack that bolt off, and then we can uh, we can begin the process of winding the uh, winding the tensioner in. Okay then, eight mil spanner. They're not overly tight; just doesn't take much to get it off. Just wind the little bolt out. As I said, oil will come out. There you go, oil stripping out and get the sealing washer as well there it is pop them to one side we do need the bolt later okay right this is going to be quite messy but what we need to do is we need to get the little tool in there when i find when i find the little slot there we go i've got it right now it is a bit awkward to keep tension on it 
and turn it without being able to put your finger on the end. But it is doable, especially when access is as limited as it is. If necessary, just if necessary, just lock it off every rotation, like so, until you get your fingers in the next position and just keep turning it round. Right. That's as far as it was going to go. It was all the way and um, all the way clockwise, and then eventually I got to a point where I couldn't turn it anymore, so I've locked it off. So we know now that the tensioner itself is now backed off um, uh, as far as it will go. A little bit of oil still dripping out, but I'll leave that there. Otherwise, it'll just drip all over the exhaust and be stinking when uh, when it comes to uh, starting a bike. So the more we the more we catch, the better. Okay, now then. What we need to do now is we just need to crack off the two bolts holding the tensioner on. Right, that's the boot bottom one's loose. And the top one, the top one actually felt a bit tighter than the bottom one to be fair. Okay. Although the tensioner has been wound out as far as it will go, it will, it will still be applying some tension to the chain, so don't be surprised if the tensioner tries to pop out. And obviously, once we remove the tensioner completely, we'll lose more oil, so one bolt. Access is limited, but and there's two bolts. Okay, now. Gently withdraw the tensioner. Now, what I do want to point out at this point, and this is very, very, very important, there is a cap on the head of the tensioner which isn't on the brand new one, and it's made of steel. And there it is. That there likes to pop off. They are pinched ever so slightly, but if you catch the edge of it on the edge of the hole for the tensioner, it can easily be pushed off. I mean, these, these, are, these feel quite tight, but it's not uncommon, and I have heard of it happening before. If you catch it and think, oh, why is it stuck? And then you pull it, that can pop off. And if it pops off, guess where it's going? And you don't want to have to retrieve that. It will be a right pain. So um, take your time, try and keep it as central as possible, and just make sure that the cap is retained on the end of the tensioner, okay? That's very, very important. Okay, so, there's the old one removed. It looks, it actually doesn't look like it's in bad nick, to be fair, um, but obviously it's, uh, it's the tension that the spring's uh, producing that is the important thing. Right, what we can do, we can pull the tool out now, and uh, there we go. So that is the first one removed. As you can see, there's the gasket. Now, let's pop that off. Put that down. As you can see, this is what I was going to talk about. You can see the hole there, that is an oil gallery. Now, look at the hole that the oil goes through. Myself and others actually do not believe that that is adequate. Now, obviously, Honda know what they're doing, and I'm not going to dispute that. However, I am going to open mine up ever so slightly, not by much. I'm only going to open it up um, to about two mil. Now, it's widely regarded um, that 
opening this up does improve oil flow through the tensioner and that actually does prolong the life. I'm not going to argue with that. However, I'm not going to recommend it. I'm not going to make it a recommendation. If you want to do that, then by all means crack on and do it. I'm going to, but I'm not going to recommend that you do. If you want to, do so. If you don't, then don't. That's fine, but I am going to. So both of mine, I'm going to open them up ever so slightly. Um, again, as I said, I've, I've done a fair bit of research into this and I know that there are other people that have done that, so I'm going to. Uh, as I said, only by only to two mil, um, just to uh, give the oil a bit, a bit of an easier time to get through into the tensioner. Okay, so we don't lose too much oil there. Um, just give around the, uh, the open into the tensioner, um, a good clean, as you can see, it's looking pretty tidy up in there. Okay, so next step, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, use my drill and I'm just going to open up the uh, the hole on the new gasket uh, ever so slightly just to uh, give the oil an easier time. Once I've done that, I'll, uh, I'll come back. Right, gaskets, what I've done, with a little two mil drill bit, I've just opened them up ever so slightly. Uh, I'm happier with that. Right, what I need to do is I need to pop the cap off just like so. There is some little, little mouldings on the side that um, should hold it in place um, the same on this one but they are they are quite snug but obviously just make sure that on a removal you you, you don't catch it on the edge because they they can pop off and cause you a world of pain so right what I need to do next is get my little tool insert it in as i said it's a lot easier when you can put your finger on the end and that's as far as it's going to go and we're locked in place right now get your um gasket pop her over there like so and then with one of the bolts what we're going to do is, in fact, I'll put that one in the bottom because it's probably easier to access for to start with. Making sure the tool doesn't come out and that the gasket stays in place. That's why I put the bolt on there just to just to make sure. And then offer up the tensioner. And then get the bolt in. And the same for the top one. And then we'll just get them up to touch. There we go, right. Now, weirdly, the factory manual um, didn't specify a torque value for the bolt in the end, and I can't remember if it did for these. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go and check the manual and see if there's a torque setting for those. I know that there isn't one for that, but I can't remember. So give me a second and I'll be all right back. Right then, I checked the manual. Believe it or not, there is no torque setting for either of those bolts or that one. So it just says tight and securely. So all I'm going to do, they don't lean on them because they're not. They're only M6 bolts, so. Make sure they're nice and tight, but don't over tighten them. Um, remember that what you're screwing them into is only made of aluminium. And there we go. Right, that's it installed. What we need to do now is get a little stopper tool and just pop it out. And I don't know if you heard that, but you'll have heard the tensioner reset against the chain. Um, and that is, uh, that is that one installed. Right. The last thing to do is to get a, to get a, the, uh, the, uh, the bolt um, for the end. I've got a little copper washer on the end which I've annealed. Um, that way it won't leak. Get that back in place. And then all I'm gonna do is just nip that up. Yeah, it is odd that there is no um, torque specification for them but uh yeah it is what it is right that is the rear the rear tensioner done 
Um, job job. All I need to do is reinstall the heat shield down here and get the uh, get the rear foot peg back on. But what I'm going to do, I'll do the front uh, the front cam chain tensioner first, and then we'll come back to that uh, at the end uh, on the wrap up. Okay, so for the next one, we need to lift the tank, get the airbox off. Okay, then for the tank, I've already removed the two bolts uh, at the front. What I need to do is just undo the. There's like a little cable here, which prevents you pulling it up too far. I'm just going to pop the bolt out. There we go. I'll pop it back in again so it doesn't get it doesn't get lost. Right. Now under here, what I just want to do is I want to undo the electrical connection to the fuel pump. Which just like so. And then the breezer and the overflow is quite Come on, off you come. All right, I think that's gonna need a little bit of persuasion, so I'm gonna to have to get a get a little screwdriver under there and just give it a little wiggle, I think. Okay, got that pipe off, it was quite tight on there. Um took a bit of effort to uh took a bit of effort to get it off, uh, but we got there in the end. Uh, in fact it just fell off. Um Okay, so what I'm going to, need to do next, um, I'm not going to disconnect the fuel lines because there's no need. What I am going to do is I'm going to just undo the two bolts. Like so. Set the two bolts, put them in my pocket. Right, now what you can do is without disconnecting the fuel lines you can literally pick up the tank turn it around like that and you've got access in here that way um there's no need to uh you know don't need to drain the tank or anything like that and you don't risk pouring fuel all over the place so next step what i need to do take the air box off and that will uh, that will give us good access down into uh the top of the cylinder head where the uh, where the cam chain is so let me get the air box off just a few bolts uh, a few screws sorry on the top and then um, there's a few connections underneath that we need to pull off um, i won't bore you with all that i'll just pull the air box off and then i'll bring you in when we've uh, when we can see the cam chain tensioner right then as you can see the whole air box is off uh, it's pretty straightforward um once you've got the top off and the air filter off you'll see that the the, uh, the trumpets for each of the uh, each of the throttles and um each of those is held in with a couple of screws. Once those screws are out, the whole thing will lift off. And then it's just things like um, the vacuum hoses uh, and things like that. These two are both screwed onto the front. It's it, what went, and, and yeah, there's there's some connectors here and here and here. Um, the only thing is you just need to remember where everything goes. So all, all the vacuum hoses get put back on once you uh, once you put it on. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And, where, and to be fair, they tend to fall where they, I mean, that one there's for the, uh, for the uh, the flapper control, so that one goes over the top. Um, yeah, just just remember where they all go. If necessary, label everything so you know where they uh, where they've got to go when you reinstall. Otherwise, you'll have running problems um, if you've got a vacuum leak. Right, what we're looking at is just down there. That is the cam chain tensioner that my finger is on right now. As you can see, that's the reason why the uh, they tell you to remove um, all of this uh, gubbins and. It's a pain, you don't need to do it. You can actually get access well enough just by unplugging things and moving things out of the way. Um, the main problem you'll have is uh, uh, getting the um, getting the, stop, the, the little tool, the uh, tension tool um, in, but you can, you can achieve it with a pair of long nose pliers, which is what we're gonna do in just a moment. So what I'm gonna do, disconnect all of these connectors. Come on, get apart. Some of them are coming apart easier than others. What's happening here? There we go. Got 
few bits of pipe work in the way as well. But we'll get in there, we'll manage. Right. Okay. Now then, this one's quite dirty, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up, because what I don't want to do is have a load of rubbish fall into it once I take it out. So I'm going to give it a bit of a clean around uh, beforehand, then what we'll do, we'll take the bolt out at the end and get the little stopper tool in. Right then, I've given it a good clean. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to get into the bolt at the back. This one here, and we're going to remove it. This one probably won't drain oil out, drip oil out like, like the back one did, because of obviously its uh, orientation. There we go. Ah, that's interesting. Interestingly enough, on this one, there's absolutely no, no ceiling washer. Uh, which is really bizarre because there should be. You know, that says to me that someone's been in here before. Well, been in here before and they haven't done it properly. So why there isn't a washer on there, I don't know, but there should be. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit of a strange one. Right, what I need to do, get my stopper tool, get it in. And obviously what I need to do is tension her up now. This one is a lot more awkward than the uh, than the real one, obviously due to access. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop it in, and I'm going to get a pair of long nose pliers, and I'm going to use them to turn it. And every now and again, I'll lock it off so I can reset myself, and then turn it a bit more, lock it off. You'll see what I do uh, in a second. Let me go and grab my pliers, and we'll begin. All right, I have got my pliers. Here we go. Let's let's give it a go with my pliers. Right. It's a bit awkward, as I'm sure you can imagine. Ugh. Okay, I'm just going to try and give it one more a little turn. It did feel like I hit a stop. Yeah, I think I've hit the stop. Right, that's as far out as it's going to go. Okay, right. What we're going to do next is we're going to withdraw the bolts for the uh, for the tensioner. I'm give myself a little bit of extra leverage. Well, not leverage, but a little bit of extra length. Um, there are some coolant hoses that are in the that are in the way. Um, there we go. As I said, yeah, coolant hoses are in the way, but with a bit of manipulation, you can get around them. bolt cool this one's tight there we go okay now as I said before don't forget about the little cap that is on top. Just manipulate the coolant hoses to one side. And then gently withdraw the tensioner. Obviously, making sure you don't lose the little cap.
and there we go. It is awkward, but the cap's still there, and uh, yeah, we're uh, we're all good. We got it off. Okay, all I've got to do now recover the gasket, and then prepare the new one to go on. Okay, new tensioner prepped, tool in, cap on, gasket on, and uh, what I've done, I've the the, the mating face on the uh, on the cylinder head i've given it a little bit of a clean just to uh ensure that there's no rubbish on there now what i've got to do is manipulate this down into its location on the cylinder head at the same time though i need to keep hold of the gasket because it does want to obviously drop off due to the orientation of this tensioner so let's get it installed in place. As I said before, this one is incredibly fiddly, but being fiddly is easier than take off the throttle bodies. Now to install it, the easiest way is to put it in at um, 90 degrees to its actual final sitting position get it in because I've, I've, obviously it's in a weird hump where the where the oil hole was it's a weird hump and there's a pipe there if you put it in 90 degrees away from that get it in uh, in its position and then turn it back um, anti-clockwise uh, through 90 degrees you'll find it will go in a darn sight easier so I think we're there, are we there? Not quite, almost. Let me just check what's going on. Right, what we've got here is the gasket is now in the wrong orientation. So let me just move that back round. Okay, and there, as you can see, we've got her in. It was incredibly fiddly. This pipe here is the one that causes the hassle. The this one here and this one here are both coolant pipes. You can remove them, obviously, but then you're gonna have the, you then have to add coolant and all that sort of stuff, and you don't need to mess around with it if you don't have to. You can get it in, as I said, put it in 90 clockwise, 90 degrees off of its actual location um, position, and then turn it back, and you'll find it'll probably go in a lot easier. It's just that pipe there that makes it a little bit difficult. Okay, right, we're in the right place. What I need to do now is get one bolt in first. Again, it's all about doing it by feel because you can't see what's going on. I can't see, you can't see. Um, that one was started. And then the same for the back one. Obviously, I don't want to try and avoid dropping either of these bolts because they'll be a pain to get out. Obviously, sticking your tongue out makes it easier. It doesn't. <laughs> what I'm going to do, actually, is use my magnet just to get it in the get it in the right hole. Okay, she's in the hole, and then. I started my finger. Okay, right. Both the bolts are now started. So, what I can do now is get my tool on and just wind them down. I'm going to wind them down to touch both of them. That's one. And two. Right, 
Right, now, as I said before, obviously, no torque spec, oddly. So I'm just gonna give them a good nip up. Don't over tighten them. They are only going into an aluminium cylinder head. You really don't wanna be stripping out your aluminium cylinder head. Just, you do it by feel. And there we go, that one. that's good enough, I reckon. Okay, so that's that installed. Now we can remove our stopper and if you listen you'll hear the you'll hear the tensioner reset you should have just heard a little clunk and there we go right next I've got my bolt this <laughs> this time I'm going to put a washer on even though there wasn't one on there before get me uh, I'll go get me a little copper washer and then we'll get that installed okay there's my little copper washer what I need to do is just get that in there Again, get her up to touch my finger first. And there we go. Just a little nip up. Right, that is both the cam chain tensioners installed. Um, obviously the front one is a lot more difficult than the rear one. The rear one, the access isn't too bad once you've got the, uh, the rear hanger and the, and the plate out of the way. Um, obviously, as, as I said before, the factory manual just tell you to remove the throttle assembly. If you want to, by all means, it gives access, uh, better access to this. Um, however, I've, as I've just demonstrated, it is not necessary to do so. Um, but bear in mind, obviously, if you took the uh, you took your bike to a Honda um, dealership, they will charge you um, labour for removing that um, because it's what it says in the manual. Although I very much doubt they actually will. So you know what I mean. Um, they'll probably they'll probably do it the way I've just done, which is quicker. But they'll charge you the labour for removing it. So you know, you pay your money, you take your choice. Right. What I need to do next is obviously get all of this back um, back together, all connected up. And then what we can do is um, get the airbox back on, get the rear hanger back on and all that sort of stuff. And then we'll fire up the bike and make sure we've got no one, uh, un, you know, horrible noises. Um, so what I'll do, I'll get it all back together and then I'll bring it back in uh, once we're ready to fire her up. Right then, as you can see, tank's all installed. The, uh, the footrest uh, hanger, uh, the rear set is all installed. The one thing I will say is obviously, just give them a torque and I have put a bit, a little bit of uh, medium strength um, Loctite on those uh, on those bolts because obviously you don't want them winding out as you're uh, as you're cruising down the road so all that then um, give her a Give her a little start Obviously listening for any untoward noises as it goes front cam chain tensioner was quite rattly before and I can't hear anything now so obviously that's uh, that's cured that issue uh, but obviously if you have got any noises that weren't there before then you need to go over your work and just double check everything um, particularly under the tank of the air box if you uh, obviously pull out all the plugs and the, and the vacuum hoses and all that sort of stuff you miss one when you reinstall it you probably find that the bike will run quite poorly uh, with a vacuum leak or with one of those uh, plugs removed because obviously there's things like the map uh, sensor, uh, manifold absolute pressure sensor that is, um, uh, you know there's, there's a few other uh, sensors under there that obviously need to be connected in order for the ECU to know what's going on with the bike. But, um, yeah, sounds lovely, revs up nicely, no hesitation whatsoever so I'm happy that everything's connected. Anyway, enough of that noise. Right, that is the process for changing the uh, the cam chain tensioners. Uh, rear one, really, really easy. Front one, bit of a pain, um, as you saw. Now, the um, as I said, the manual the manual does tell you you need to remove the throttle body assembly. It's not one hundred percent necessary, as I've just shown you. Um, it just makes it a little bit more fiddly. However, it's worth that extra fiddle. For the to save you the hassle of having to take the throttle body assembly off um 
just be mindful of the little caps on the ends of the cam chain, ten cam chain tensioners. That's a bit of a mouthful. Um, just make, make sure that those caps don't come off because if they do, you're in a world of trouble um, because they'll drop down, um, drop down inside and they're a right pig to get out. Anyway, um, I'll put the links to uh, the cam chain, ten cam chain tensioners in the, uh, in the description um, so you can find them from where I got them from. And uh, hopefully you found, this, uh, you found this video useful. If you, uh, if you did, give it a like, uh, drop me a comment, um, or if you need any help with anything, then uh, feel free to fire away and I'll, uh, I'll do what I can. Thank you very much for stopping by, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye now.